Assalamualaikum. Uh, my name is Dr. Rasha Zia. Um, I hope you are all fine uh, after the summer vacation. Uh, unfortunately, we can't see you uh, physically in the college because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, and we hope sincerely that uh, after this pandemic, uh, we will restart uh, uh, the lectures and the clinical training in the hospital and college. Uh, meanwhile, we have to continue online teaching and uh, today I am going to discuss uh, acute diarrhea. Uh, my mobile number is 0300-844-0973 and my WhatsApp number is same 0300-844-0973 and my email address is rzia56 at the rate hotmail.com if you want to ask anything uh, regarding pediatrics any question regarding today's topics and the previous topics uh, please please uh, feel free to phone me or send email or whatsapp me i will be delighted to give you the answers as soon as possible uh, today we are going to discuss uh, acute gastroenteritis uh, which is uh, one of the common problems in summer in Pakistan and uh, we see a lot of cases of uh, acute gastroenteritis uh, in summer and a uh, lot of cases of upper respiratory and low respiratory tract infections in winter. As far as the, uh, the diarrhea is concerned, uh, it is a second leading causes of all death worldwide and is one of the most common causes of morbidity and mortality in children worldwide. Uh, it accounts about 30% of hospitalization in children in Pakistan and about 9 to 10% of hospitalization in children less than five years old in United States. The definition of uh, gastroenteritis is uh, if you have three or more loose stools, uh, loose or watery stools uh, per day, then you can label as uh, having diarrhea or the other definition is uh, that if your stool weight is excess of 200 grams per day then you are labeled as having diarrhea. Uh, the other imp most important thing is if there is an alteration in the normal bowel movements characterized by the decreased consistency and increased frequency. So two things are important in the definition one is decreased consistency and the other is increased frequency and the duration is uh, less than 14 days in acute diarrhea this is a arbitrary definition because uh, if you have diarrhea more than 14 days uh, we labeled is as chronic diarrhea so for acute diarrhea the duration must be less than 14 days. As far as the epidemiology is concerned, uh, you roughly get two episodes per person annually in the general population, but in children it is uh, 2.5 episodes per child less than three years old annually and five episodes per year for children less than three years old and in daycare because uh, you usually get cross infection uh, in daycare where there are other children so you d you have more episodes of diarrhea if you attend a daycare nursery or in a school uh, we have two uh, peaks of uh, diarrhea one big the major part is in summer but we have a second peak in winter uh, when we see a lot of cases of gastroenteritis. As far as the etiology is concerned, uh, 
we have a viral etiology in which 70 to 80 percent of the infectious diarrhea in the developed country is due to uh, viral infections uh, bacterial are 10 to 20 percent of infections infectious diarrhea but responsible for most cases of uh, severe diarrhea uh, bacterial diarrhea are usually more severe as compared to the viral one and then there is a third uh, cause which is a protozoal and it counts for the less than 10 percent of the etiology so the most common cause of diarrhea in children is uh, viral in etiology and out of viral etiology there are different types of viruses the most common virus responsible for diarrhea in children is a rotavirus the other viruses are the norovirus also called norvo like uh, is uh, the third is enteric adenovirus and the fourth is a astrovirus Rotavirus is the most common cause of uh, diarrhea and is a leading cause of hospitalization for diarrhea in children, most prevalent during the winter season but we see also in the summer also uh, and uh, it's the fecal-oral transmission and the viral shedding can persist for 21 days. So if a child is suffering from rotavirus infection, he is infectious to other children for next 21 days because he keep on shedding the virus in the stool it is an acute onset of fever followed by watery diarrhea which the frequency of stool is 10 to 20 per day and can persist up to a week this is the photo electronic microscopic view of uh, the rotavirus The second type of virus is a norovirus it is most common cause of diarrhea which gives you outbreaks or epidemics so if you see a lot of cases in a school or in a in situation with diarrhea so most likely it is an epidemic and it is usually due to norovirus there are multiple modes of fecal oral transmission the acute onset of uh, nausea and vomiting watery diarrhea with the abdominal cramps and persist for one to three days you see one time lot of cases of diarrhea uh, in children with the abdominal pain nausea vomiting and watery diarrhea then most likely they are all suffering from norovirus mostly the rotavirus gives you infection in one or two children Then this the enteric adenovirus is primarily affects children more than less than sorry four years of age is the transmission is same as a fecal oral and the clinical picture is similar to the rotavirus where you get fever and the watery diarrhea. Then the fourth variety is astrovirus, uh, primarily affects children less than four years old and and those who are immunocompromised. Uh, this is seasonal peak in the winter. Fecal oral transmission, viral shedding can occur for several weeks. Uh, with astrovirus, you get get fever, nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, and diarrhea, lasting up to one week. So the summary of the viral uh, diarrhea is most likely cause of uh, infectious diarrhea in children. Rotavirus and the norovirus are most common. Symptoms usually include low grade fever, nausea, vomiting, abdominal cramps uh, and watery diarrhea lasting up to one week and viral shedding occur for weeks after, after settling viral shedding can occur for weeks after symptoms uh, resolve now after the viral diarrhea the next cause 
common cause of diarrhea is a bacterial in nature which is there are different types of bacteria which can give you uh, acute gastroenteritis like uh, Campylobacter, Salmonella, Shigella, Enterohemorrhagic, E. coli and Vibro cholera. So we'll discuss one by one what are the different uh, bacterial causes. Campylobacter is the most common bacterial pathogen which causes diarrhea in children and they transmitted through the ingestion of contaminated food or by the direct contact with the fecal material and the symptoms include diarrhea plus minus blood, abdominal cramps can be severe, malaise and fever, usually self-limited and does not require antibiotics. The this is the picture of the Campylobacter organism which gives you a diarrhea and it's one of the common causes of bacterial diarrhea in children. The next variety is a Salmonella which is also most common in children less than 4 years old and a peak in the first few months of life. Transmitted by ingestion of contaminated food and contact with the infected animals like chickens Symptoms include a fever, diarrhea, and abdominal cramping. Antimicrobial therapy can prolong fecal shedding, but if the child is toxic and having severe uh, fever, then we have to treat them with uh, antibiotics because they then n not uh, recovered. This is the picture of the salmonella. You can see the body and the tail of the salmonella organisms. There are three varieties of the salmonella, salmonella typhoid and the salmonella paratyphoid A, B and C. Now the next variety is the Shigella which is also transmitted through fecal oral route. Symptoms include fever, abdominal cramps, tenesmus and mucus stools with or without blood can lead to serious complication. Antimicrobial treatment shortens the duration of the illness and limits the fecal shedding. So in Shigella infection, the antibiotics are indicated in the early stage. Next cause is E. coli 0157-4. H7 and transmission is via contaminated food and water and the symptom includes a bloody diarrhea, severe abdominal pain and sometimes fever and the child is usually quite unwell and can lead to a serious complications like renal failure. Antibodies have no proven benefit and may increase the risk of the complications. This is the the picture of the E. coli, you can see the body in which there are hairy and there are, are number of tails. Unlike the typhoid, there is only one tail. Then there is cholera, Vibrio cholera. There are two major biotypes of the Vibrio cholera that can cause diarrhea or classical and eat or and there are two common stereotypes of Vibrio cholera that cause diarrhea are Inaba and Ogawa. Uh, luckily we have seen less cases of cholera a few years ago. There used to be epidemics of cholera in Lahore and uh, you get used to get lot of cases of uh, uh, di diarrhea, severe diarrhea uh, with uh, severe dehydration in children and in adults. Uh, but luckily now with the uh, and with the vaccine against uh, cholera and the uh, and the improvement in the living standard, we see very few cases of cholera in summer. Uh, the clinical features of the cholera, you will see the rice watery stool, marked dehydration, projectile vomiting, no fever or abdominal pain, muscle cramps, uh, hypovolemic shock and scanty urine because 
they pass less urine uh, due to dehydration this is the picture of the cholera vibrio it is usually a comma shaped and gives you severe watery diarrhea and uh, the mortality is very high if you don't treat them at the right time now the summary of the bacterial diarrhea is that it can affect all age groups and the fecal oral transmission often through contaminated food so please avoid the contaminated food uh, food to uh, having uh, this problem typical symptoms include bloody diarrhea severe cramping and malaise and antibiotic treatment not always necessary the antibiotics are usually necessary in salmonella infection and uh, in uh, shigella infections as far as the history and physical examination is concerned there are three main goals estimate the level of dehydration i will tell you the different types of dehydration like mild moderate and severe and what are their presentation identify the likely causes on the basis of the history and clinical finding determine if additional studies and or medications are necessary in the history you will see the onset frequency quantity and the character you will ask about the onset frequency quantity and the character of the diarrhea associated symptoms like nausea vomiting fever abdominal pain tenesmus malaise uh, recent oral intake uh, from outside uh, the house because usually you get infection uh, Mm, while you eating outside like in restaurants and uh, and takeaways uh, most unlikely you will not get any infection if you eat a homemade food and what are the signs and symptoms of dehydration you assess the level of dehydration physical examinations the vitals are most important and in vitals you check for the respiratory rate heart rate uh, temperature blood pressure and oxygen saturation and you will get the fair amount of idea what is the uh, condition of the child uh, you do a exa abdominal examination to check if there is any abdominal distension if the bowel sounds are present and uh, not uh, or uh, the level of dehydration um, the presence of the occult blood is also very important in gastroenteritis sometimes you see occult blood sometimes you see frank blood and as i said the signs of uh, dehydration Uh, as far as the lab evaluation is concerned it mostly is unnecessary for uh, for children who present within one day from the onset of diarrhea because mostly the lab investigations are normal and it is the clinical examination which we give you the diagnosis and the type of uh, cause of diarrhea uh, the warning signs and symptoms are the bloody diarrhea high grade fever severe abdominal pain severe dehydration or the comorbid com com uh, condition when you see the deterioration in the conscious level the fecal leukocyte followed by bacterial culture over and parasites uh, viral antigens uh, we check the uh, cbc to do differentiate between a viral and a bacterial infection when we see a high white cell count in bacterial infection and we'll check for the urea and electrolytes to see the uh, the sodium and potassium and the calcium level and also renal function to check the urea and creatinine Uh, to check if there is uh, any perirenal or renal failure uh as far as the treatment is concerned the most important treatment is a fluid replacement as you know you lose uh, uh, fluids from the body with uh, acute watery diarrhea and vomiting so you have to replace uh, the lost uh, fluid uh, and the fluids 
are given in the form of a oral rehydration uh, solution which we call an ORS or if the child is unable to swallow or if he is in not in a fully conscious state then we have to give a parental IV uh, fluids uh, we recommend early refeeding against all the odds because people are not uh, used to give uh, feeding to the child with gastroenteritis which is not a advisable thing to do because uh, children are usually malnourished uh, either before having gastroenteritis or they become malnourished with gastroenteritis so early feed refeeding is a very important as far as the management of children is concerned uh, some Sometimes we give uh, leporamide or oral bismuth for ad adult, uh, for, for, for older children or zinc also because uh, that helps in the treatment of uh, the diarrhea and as I mentioned uh, there are a few indications of uh, antibiotics uh, prescription like in salmonella or in shigella. As far as the assessment of the dehydration is concerned, it is very important uh, because it will change your management. So there are different types of uh, malnutrition at uh, first for dehydration which called it mild, moderate and the severe. In uh, mild dehydration the appearance is uh, irritable and thirsty. Uh, the interior fontanel is normal and eyes are also normal in uh, uh, moderate uh, uh, dehydration the child is ir irritable and very thirsty the interior fontanel is depressed and eyes are sunken and in severe dehydration the child is also lethargic uh, and coma or unconscious uh, and the interior fontanel is markedly depressed and, and eyes are more sunken In mild uh, dehydration the tongue is normal, the skin is normal and the breathing is also normal. In moderate dehydration the tongue is dry, the skin is slow to retraction and the breathing is rapid. Uh, in severe dehydration the tongue is very dry and furrowed and skin is very slow uh, retraction and the breathing is uh, very rapid due to acidosis metabolic acidosis uh, in mild dehydration the pulse is normal the urine output is normal and weight is um, weight loss is less than 5% in moderate dehydration uh, the pulse is rapid and low volume this uh, the urine is uh, dark uh, due, due to concentration uh, and the weight loss is uh, between 6 to 9% in severe dehydration the pulse is feeble or imperceptible impostable and uh, the urine is scanty and the weight loss is 10 percent or more and the blood pressure is also low or unrecordable uh, as far as the fluid replacement is concerned if the child is conscious and uh, no vomiting and mild and moderate dehydration we usually give ORS ORS come in the form of a powder form and uh, where you have to make and the put the whole packet of ORS in four glass of water it also comes in the form of a Pedialyte uh, there are different flavors of Pedialyte like uh, um, apple flavor orange flavor strawberry so children like uh, the Pedialyte more as compared to plain simple ORS uh, so you can try if the child is not vomiting or he is uh, fully conscious um, and you have to correct the dehydration in the next uh, 24 hours uh, the composition of the oral rehydration salt is uh, 
the ingredients are sodium chloride 3.5 g per liter dry sodium citrate or 2.9 or sodium bicarbonate 2.5 g per liter potassium chloride 1.5 g per liter and the glucose is 20 g per liter the glucose helps in the um, movement of the sodium and the potassium inside uh, the cells as i mentioned early refeeding is very important uh, because the luminal contents uh, help promote growth of the new enterocyte and facilitate mucosal repair and early refeeding can shorten the duration of the disease lactose restriction is not necessary except in a very severe and prolonged diarrhea i have seen children put on a lactose free uh, free milk in in uh, cases where there is a history of diarrhea for one or two days which is not recommended lactose restriction is only recommended in a very severe and prolonged diarrhea cases not in a short duration of uh, diarrhea the lactose free formula is not a normal um, uh, milk so it should be indicated only in the cases which really there is a lactose intolerance not in every case of gastroenteritis um i really give um i i usually not give any other medicine except uh, uh, the zinc which is usually recommended but sometimes in, in older children we can give loperamide and bismuth for uh, for reduction of the volume of the and frequency of the stools Uh, as i mentioned um, empiric antibiotic therapy is generally not uh, beneficial and can be harmful those with uh, more than 8 stools per day diarrhea more than one week volume depletion immunosuppression or warning signs then you can give antibiotic we normally give a uh, uh, third generation and uh, cephalosporin um, but it varies from the type of the cause of the gastroenteritis uh, this specific antibiotic therapy obviously uh, no need to give if there is a viral etiology campylobacter only if severe salmonella mostly if they have a high grade fever then we give antibiotics uh, shigella there is a an e coli uh, in shigella infection there is a proven benefit that uh, you have to give antibiotic and in e coli not 157 it can be harmful so only salmonella infection and shigella infections uh, uh, we recommend to give antibiotic uh, therapy complications of watery diarrhea as i mentioned dehydration is the most important complication you get get electrolyte imbalance uh, like uh, uh, hypokalemia hyponatremia hypocalcemia can give you a tetany convulsions may be due to hypocalcemia or hypoglycemia and also renal failure can be due to dehydration pre renal failure or as a complication of the e coli not uh, 0157 which can gives you hemolytic uremic syndrome um we continue with the complication as i mentioned we have electrolyte imbalances convulsions hemolytic uremic syndrome mostly due to e coli infection leukomyoid reaction toxic megacolon where you will find the distension of the abdomen protein losing and teropathy you can get uh, reactive arthritis uh, and sometimes perforation of the bowel especially in uh, cases of the typhoid uh, gastroenteritis Uh, we have a, a oral uh, cholera vaccine and injectable cholera vaccine uh, will give every year the cholera vaccine we used to give but now since the cholera epidemic is or no more uh, happening so we, we normally not give any cholera vaccine as a routine unless there is an epidemic and uh, there is a vaccine also available for rotavirus uh, which uh, we give uh, 
to every child uh, as a part of a EPI program. Uh, the oral uh, rotavirus vaccine is an oral vaccine we give every child at six weeks of age and ten weeks of age because rotavirus affects most of the children under six years of age. Then the other is the typhoid vaccine which we can give uh, orally also. There are capsule available um, one, three and five days. Uh, three capsules are given um, uh, to protect uh, having typhoid uh, infection for the next two years. Uh, there is also an uh, injectable vaccine available. Uh, they also protect uh, a child for two years of age so you have to rep for two years uh, and so you have to give after every two years uh, salmonella vaccine either orally or as uh, injectable as you know the most common cause of uh, diarrhea is a, a fecal oral root uh, so and the most important thing which can give you infection is if there is a, a polluted drinking water. So please uh, always either boil uh, the, drink, uh, the water for 10 minutes uh, then it becomes safe uh, to, uh, uh, or, uh, for drinking and always uh, take food uh, uh, from home uh, made uh, and try to avoid uh, the food from outside uh, or also take away uh, because uh, it gives you infection uh, so if you want to eat fruit always wash them peel them and then eat them um, always boil the water for 10 minutes uh, hand washing is very important because hands are the carrier which takes you the infection into your mouth and as we know nowadays uh, the importance of hand washing uh, is so important to avoid uh, COVID-19 infection uh, proper sanitation is also important because uh, we have uh, seen that there is a drinking water pipes are mixed with the sanitation pipes uh, and then there is a, a infection in the drinking water and that can spread uh, into all the uh, the community also there are carriers of the typhoid fever which needs to be treated so please uh, if you examine the stool or uh, the typhoid test for all your food handlers especially cooks uh, in the hotels restaurants and at home that will uh, protect you from having typhoid fever thank you very much uh, i hope uh, this will um, improve your understanding of uh, acute gastroenteritis and what are their signs and symptoms and how we can manage uh, and uh, uh, the um, gastroenteritis uh, um, and also how we can have a vaccine against uh, different types of uh, organisms uh, uh, if you have any question please um, my Mobile number is 0300 um, My WhatsApp number is same 0300 And my email address is rzia56 at hotmail.com Please feel free to ask me any question regarding this lecture or the previous lectures or any question related to pediatrics. I will be more than happy to answer all your questions as soon as possible. Thank you very much.